Okay, so I think we are ready to start. So dear audience, um, welcome. Uh, my name is Mariangela Pellegrini. I'm the Educational and Patient Program Manager for the EuroBluNet, European Reference Network on Rare Hematological Disease. And it's my great pleasure to welcome all of you today on behalf of the ERN um, to today's lecture that is the fourth webinar of the program named Topic on Focus on Sickle Cell Disease for Patients and their Family. As you may know, um, this program is a cycle of webinars and it, it aims to disseminate important topics related to sickle cell disease to the patient's community and their families. And so we are going to talk about the last advances in terms of treatment, diagnosis, improving the quality of life uh, and so on. Um, it's important to underline that all the topics of this program have been chosen by people living with sickle cell disease uh, themselves um, as they have answered to a survey when they have prioritized the educational needs. Before uh, officially starting this lecture, I would like first to share some house rules and technical information. Um, so as you are seeing, this session is recorded because um, it will be implemented in our educational channel on YouTube and our um, e-learning environment also on our website. So if you don't feel at your ease with the camera on, please put it off and also be kind of informed that your microphone will be muted along all the presentation, but you have the possibility to write the questions in the chat because at the end of the lecture, there will be um, the question and answering session. So the possibility to answer to your questions or comment, feedback, whatever you prefer. Um, so as said, we can go through today's topic. So we are going to talk about uh, neonatal screening. Uh, this lecture is led by Professor Beatrice Goldbys. Uh, well, first of all, she's the co-coordinator of the Iran Eurobonnet, so I'm very honored and pleased to have her with us today. But she's also a physician specialized in clinical biology. She has developed a reference laboratory center for the diagnosis, prevention, and follow-up of patients with hereditary red blood cell disorder. She's responsible of neonatal, neonatal screening program in Brussels region and has been working for its extension at the national level. Um, she has also contributed to the implementation of national network of health professional non-oncological red blood cell disorder through the Belgian Hematology Society. And also she um, works a lot with patients community and patients advocate, and also on grants for research project in Africa like Burkina Faso and Democratic Republic of Congo. So please, dear audience, welcome with me, uh, Professor Gubis. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Maria Angela. So, um, good afternoon. Even if I don't see uh, each of you, I'm very glad to uh, share my, uh, my knowledge, and I hope uh, I will be able to pass it to, to you, and so you can spread it to uh, uh, other um, colleagues, friends, um, children, or, or whatever. And um, we, we really wanted to um, speak about neonatal screening because it's, it's something very important in, in the life of any patient with sickle cell disease to get a diagnosis, a final diagnosis, but a way could be the screening. So we first will, I will explain what means screening because sometimes it's, um, it's something different because you, you understand about diagnosis, but there is also uh, a matter of screening. Uh, we, I, I also would like to share with you the understanding of the purpose and the benefit of this neonatal screening. 
And finally, for whom, how, and where the screening is offered. And of course, then it will be open to a, to a discussion. Yep. So what means screening first? Uh, you see, uh, we would like to offer. That's something important. Offer means it's not mandatory. You can refuse to be screened for sure. But it's to offer it to a group of people who are not appar apparently ill, affected by any disease, but who are at risk for it, for any condition, because the screening might be for other uh, diseases than uh, sickle cell disease. And so they can be tested. So in, in a group uh, that has to be uh, defined, we would like to find the one who has a positive screening. Of course, it, it means that you might have false positive. So it means that as soon as you are screened positive, you are offered more tests to make the diagnosis, the final diagnosis of the condition, and for sure to enter this uh, individual affected by the condition into a comprehensive care. So the comprehensive care might be quite different from one condition to uh, another condition. And then we can come back a long time ago. Uh, it was um, given by the word as organization in 1968, and they just gave us the principle and practice of screening for disease, for any disease. So what are those criteria? First, uh, the disease must be a serious public health problem because screening is for a group. You don't uh, focus on someone, it's for a group. So it must be, uh, a health problem. And so at the national level, we will take that into account. You have also to understand the natural history of the disease. So you have to know when the disease will uh, begin, what, what can be done to be sure that we uh, have more signs or symptoms of the disease if you give a treatment, for example. You must also de detect the, the disease at a pre-symptomatic stage. It means that you can say, yes, this individual is affected, but it's not too late to give a treatment or to do any, uh, anything. Uh, the treatment as to have proved is efficacy and it's applicable to the patients. You, you have also to have uh, appropriate means of diagnosis and the treatment of patients are available. Maybe you know that there is a treatment, but it's not available uh, at the level of the country, for example. You must also uh, give the possibility to uh, have an effective screening test and it's acceptable for the population if you have to cut your hand to have a diagnosis, it's not acceptable for the population, of course. And you must have a precise therapeutic protocol. So you know for whom you will give a treatment, for those who won't give a treatment, for those you can wait a, a certain time, and so on. Since you, you provides this opportunity, you offer this opportunity of screening to um, a certain amount of the population or all the population at birth, for example, in neonatal screening, there must be an economic, economic cost benefit ratio. And then the sustainability of the program must be ensured and evaluated. This means that you said, okay, I, I can um, screen the, the condition 
then uh, I can, if there is a positive test, I can make the diagnosis. And finally, I can give a treatment and all the comprehensive care that is uh, needed. So I have to prove that I have made the, the test and indeed there is a benefit for the patients. You know that the treatments uh, are all, all, always uh, changing or there is an evolution, you offer something different. Uh, so you have to be sure that the treatment is given, the comprehensive care, care is, is given to the patient too, but also that you can offer the best treatment, the new treatments and everything. So those are the basis. So is this uh, applicable to sickle cell disease? So what is the pur purpose and the benefit uh, of neonatal screening for sickle cell disease? That's the second question. We know that sickle cell disease is an inherited serious blood illness. And we know also that uh, during the time that we are in um, the, the belly of uh, our mother, we provide something what we call fetal hemoglobin. And at the time of birth, a little before, but at the time of, of birth, we will produce another hemoglobin, which might be, which is most often adult hemoglobin, but might be only hemoglobin S, which is the um, illness. And we know that the hemoglobin is something very important to be sure that we can breathe. Of course, we breathe through our lungs, but the oxygen has to go all in our body, in our brain, in our heart, in our muscles, everywhere. And during the time of the pregnancy, when we are a fetus, the mother breathes and she has the adult hemoglobin while the fetus has to catch the oxygen from the mother. And this is why there is the production of this one, which is called fetal hemoglobin. But as soon as the baby can breathe, it produces an adult hemoglobin. And it's only at that time when we produce an adult hemoglobin that it could be something different, abnormal, which is called hemoglobin S, and then the illness uh, appeared. And since we know it's a serious blood illness, we of course will give a treatment. So this means that we know the natural history of the disease. And we know also that there is a pre-symptomatic phase for screening. As I told you in the beginning, we were fetus each of us, and what we had is a fetal hemoglobin. And at the moment of birth, we produce this adult hemoglobin, which, which, which might be abnormal, it's called hemoglobin S. So during this time, between birth and around two months of age, there are no symptoms, but, but what is very nice to know is that we can already detect the hemoglobin S by a test. I will show it to you after. And we know also that as soon as we have the majority of our hemoglobin, which is called hemoglobin S, we will have signs and symptoms like infection, painful crisis, and pelo, what we called uh, as medical doctor, anemia. And we know also that we can do something during this period and all along. So we know that we can vaccinate the children. Then we can give antibiotherapy to fight against those infections. 
we know also that we can give recommendation and parents education to limit the uh, painful crisis and some part of the uh, anemia. We can also give a genetic counseling for the parents for the next uh, children. And uh, after a certain time, around two years of life, we will also try to prevent all uh, cerebrovascular events. So in the brain that could uh, appear, it's also prevention through transcranial Doppler. So if you don't have a screening, sometimes the expression of the disease is not uh, very important and the diagnosis is made really late. And so you also don't uh, have this possibility of prevention. So this is an example uh, through a cartoon. Uh, you can give all the recommendation to decrease the painful crisis. Of course, you can give it to, to the child, but first of all, in the beginning, you will give it to um, the parents. And here it's don't forget some tips to avoid the painful crisis, like to cover up when it's cold, to avoid extreme heat, to don't give germs a chance, wash yourself well. You have to oxygen yourselves and go for walks, taking care to cover yourself. If you play sport, avoid sports that are too intense. Beware of high altitudes, avoid sitting too long, your blood needs to circulate. Drink regularly throughout the day. And finally, go regularly to the doctor to follow your evolution, warm him at the slightest problem, fever, or at the slightest question. So this is very important. And you can't give those recommendations to the parents if there is no diagnosis. And the first step might be through neonatal screening. For room and whole neonatal screening for sickle cell is performed. You might have antenatal screening, so it's uh, for the couples. But what we are speaking here is the neonatal screening. So you have all, all of, of, of us, we have uh, two genes to go to the expression of this hemoglobin. You have a, a normal gene and you might have the disorder one. So the, the green one is the normal and the red one is the abnormal, abnormal one. If you have a mother who has only one gene, which, is, uh, which has the disorder, we called it uh, a carrier. And it's the same for the father. So what we pass to our children is half of yourself, if I can say. So you can pass the normal uh, gene or the disorder one, and then the same from the father. And we know that our children are the mixture of our genes. So for example, you see here, the mother give the normal gene and the father too. So the children is normal and not like their parents. And it's, it might be amazing, but it's still, um, your child because it's a mixture. And then you might have the normal one and the disorder one from the father, you are a carrier, or the opposite, the disorder one from the mother and the normal from the father. So you have also a child who is carrier of the disorder. And finally, you have the, uh, disorder one from the mother and from the father, and you have the disorder. And it can be um, detected uh, at birth if the test is uh, effective. And the screening can give you uh, a precise uh, therapy. Just to let you know that it affects both male, males and females. Okay. 
Okay, I just uh, get this picture from uh, from um, a journey in Benin, and it was really uh, very interesting to see that there was um, uh, a centrum, a medical centrum, and all on the walls there were the different um, cartoon like this one, and I make a picture of of one of them. And it, it, it was the, the purpose of it was to explain to the parents all the, the life and all the different aspects of the, of the disease. And what I showed you before was on a disorder uh, set, uh, passed to the, the children by this way. And this is the same for sickle cell uh, disorder. So you see here at uh, if all each of the parents are carrier of the hemoglobin S, there is uh, one chance on four to have a child uh, affected by sickle cell anemia. But you have different uh, possibilities, like the mother, for example, is carrier of the hemoglobin S, and the father carrier of hemoglobin C. Uh, see, and then there is also a possibility to have a child with a sickle cell disorder, which is quite different from uh, this one, but is also uh, the disease. So you have the different forms. We have to know that and to explain it to to the parents. And there is the clinical expression. So the screening uh, must be. Um, really um, done in a way there is uh, uh, finally a correct diagnosis and followed by a preci precise therapeutic um, protocol. So who will benefit from the treatment and how? And then... Uh, and then the screening is performed in, performed in view to find babies at higher chance of sickle cell disease, which is a serious blood illness. And who is at risk? In fact, all population were malaria. Malaria is a uh, mosquito-borne infectious disease. Uh, and where malaria is, or was endemic. So if you look at the map, you will see all the region here in yellow uh, are the region where malaria is or was. So you know that in the Mediterranean Basin, uh, if you go to Italy, you don't have to take um, a pill to uh, fight against um, malaria, of course, but a long time ago, malaria uh, was, was there. And for example, in Sicilia, where the, the, the individuals were, there, there was less migration, effect of, of migration. So the sickle cell disease was really very well stu studied. Uh, but you see here also you have Greece, uh, you have the south of Spain, and it's no more the, um, the um, it, was, it is no more endemic for, for malaria. But nevertheless, there was a mutation and the hemoglobin S or other abnormal hemoglobin appeared. So this is all the population at risk that we can um, screen. But of course, you know that there is an uh, impact of immigration and the ancestry. So in Brussels, for example, um, people coming from certain region like Italy uh, in Brussels or in the south of Belgium, they are from the third or fourth generation. And sometimes we forget that the patient are coming from those regions who malaria was uh, endemic. So it's not always so easy to say, okay, I have to point this population. And why this condition? Um, the, the, I told you that someone can be carrier of the hemoglobin S. We say also that the sickle hemoglobin tray, it's another way to, to tell it. 
and all those people have an advantage and they are more resistant to malaria infection. So for example, if tomorrow I go to Democratic Republic of Congo and I, and, and I, am, I have no the hemoglobin S, uh, and I go with one of my colleagues who is a carrier of hemoglobin S, if both we go there in Kinshasa, for example, and we don't take uh, a pill against the um, infection, the, the one who, who um, could die from the infection is me and not my colleague carrier of it. So it's really an advantage. But of course, as you saw before, if we have both parent carrier, unfortunately, there is a risk to have an affected child. So this is why, uh, of course, that the ninth criteria is that the economic cost-benefit ratio must be assessed. So if you look in one of the, the publication here in 2017, you see that the frequency of the gene, uh, of the abnormal gene, and uh, the newborns with sickle cell anemia is um, uh, varies a lot from one country to the other. And we, if we look at uh, the European countries, it differed also. And this is why at the national level, the authorities look if a screening for the old population has a cost benefit. Uh, I'm sorry to say so, but it's like that. And so if it will be applied like the other um, disorder that are uh, screen at birth. How and where neonatal screening for sickle cell disease is performed? So there is an effective screening test uh, that exists and the screening test is acceptable to the population. So you can screen on the umbilical cords, but most often what is done is with the other uh, tests that are performed at birth for hypothyroidy, for phenylketonuria, for example. And what is done, it's what we call a kneel prick. So you have only a, a drop of blood, which is, um, is uh, put on a filter paper. It's really like that on a filter paper. And then in the lab, we can uh, take this circle and we have a program. It doesn't matter uh, the analysis in the laboratory. And we can say, OK, the profile is totally normal or uh, it's abnormal. And then we transmit the results. And as I told you before, there is a control. It's a screening test and not um, a diagnostic test. So other tests are performed to be sure that uh, we can give a final diagnosis. In, uh, in, in the screening, you can give only the, the results for uh, an affected child, so a child, uh, a newborn who has the sickle cell disease, or you can transmit also the results of the carrier. It will differ, differ from the political strategy in each uh, country. And why it could be uh, interesting to also transmit the result for a carrier, it's of course for genetic uh, counseling for the child, future family, but also for the, the parents, because if they, they weren't screened or diagnosed before, they might have a risk of having a child with a disease. So if you are not informed, you can't understand the situation and you can't, can't take uh, any uh, um, decision. But in most of the, of the screening, the purpose of the screening is to transmit a, a results of any baby affected by the condition. And here it's sickle cell disease. 
So when you have a positive test, you make the control with more tests. And then you, uh, if the diagnosis is confirmed, you have the possibility to put the, um, the whole family in a comprehensive care management. And here you see um, that in um, Europe, um, there are different region or country where the neonatal screening is applied. And most often it's universal. So I told you before that we know that there are several uh, origin at risk. So the patient, um, the family uh, coming from region where malaria, so this mosquito-borne infection uh, was present, was really frequent, but since there are immigration, the mixture of all the population, it might be difficult to, um, uh, so to ask many questions and maybe you don't, you don't remember that uh, your grand-grandmother or grand-grandfather uh, is coming from somewhere uh, at risk. So most often it's universal unless in France is targeted um, to, the, to the population at risk. And so they, uh, they ask to, uh, to the mother and the father, uh, what, uh, what is their ancestry? So this is uh, the, the end of my, um, of my talk. So the message that I wanted to share with you is the screening means to test a group of individuals for a severe disease while a treatment is available. And if positive further tests are done to give the final diagnosis. Then making the diagnosis of sickle cell disease early in life is important. It makes possible to prevent serious events. The frequency of sickle cell disease varies greatly from one European country to another. See migration of people from European or non-European countries where malaria infection is or was endemic. And screening of the, for the disease is simple, effective, and not dangerous. It is implemented in several European countries where it has been proven to be cost effective. And it's open to, to the discussion. Thank you very much, Professor Golby, for this very clear presentation. And as said during my introduction, now we have a, a moment dedicated to the questions. Um, if you prefer to raise the question orally, you can raise your hand. Um, or you can unmute yourself and take the floor. That is also maybe easier than raising the hand on Zoom. Or if you prefer, you also can write a question in the chat. And as I always said, this is a unique occasion for uh, talking directly with such an expert on the subject. So I really encourage the audience for commenting. Yeah, probably I, I missed something or you, you would like to know something more specific. Or Maybe. it's totally clear and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> or also it could be on the other way around that we can yeah. maybe ask uh, to the audience according to the country yeah. if they have a neonatal program or if yes um, how they were informed about it how they were informed yeah. could be yeah. also interesting so i can see the first question when can we expect universal newborn screening to be implemented in france given the highest incidence of sickle cell disease in europe yeah so 
of course, I'm not in the place of the um, uh, of the authorities in France, but um, I know that they um, they um, the way they see it is the fact that uh, most of the cases that uh, were missed were the cases um, because of administrative problems. So administrative problems means that you are or, 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 or just the screening by itself. So if you don't screen the baby because there is a, a so the birth was not what uh, what was was done in an emergency, and then you you were not in the the, the right env environment, so you you can miss it. Also, the way you miss it, uh, because uh, you 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 mix the name of, of of a baby that that could be, but it's more than than that. It's it's most often they say okay, there is. A, let's say 1,000 newborns in a certain maternity. And in fact, 10 babies were not screened because of different aspects. So they say it's the most important problem. And, and this is why um, they say that they never uh, really um, could uh, show that the fact it's targeted was, was not a good way to perform it. And I think it's also related to, to the, the economical uh, aspects, so the cost benefit. But I understand that, um, yeah, it's a way, it's, it's a choice, it's a choice. And, and you say, uh, I'm, I'm, I always like to think in a positive way. So in Belgium, uh, the, the while the, the frequency of the disease is very high, uh, we have a screening on, only in the region of Liège and the Brussels region. So I think that in France, at least uh, you have a screening all over the, the country and this is more than nothing. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's see if I, I have a, I, I have a, a question. If if someone can can answer to me, uh, how do you see the impact of the patient associ association to push the authorities um, to perform uh, a neonatal screening where where is it has uh, a cost benefit, uh, economical uh, cost benefit aspect. I don't know if someone would like to, and maybe in France, uh, the, I, 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 I'm sure that um, the patient association had a, a very um, strong impact with the implementation of the neonatal screening. So how did you do it? Or can we maybe um, give any advice to, to the other EPACs in, in other countries? I don't see the chat if someone would like to react. Hmm? Yes, or I said before you can unmute and to have one answer in Portugal since February, 2022, we are doing a two years pilot test nationwide after a one year pilot in the two highest incidence, second highest incidence areas. Yeah, we, we did it also in Belgium. So we, um, we, we gave the authorities the, um, the, the frequency of the disease. And so during six months, we performed the national screening. And even with that, we didn't succeed. And I really think that we need the, um, the patient association to, um, to help us, um, to help not, not us because it's not for us, it's for, it's for the, the, the children, of course, um, to be sure that they can be entered in a, 
in um, in a comprehensive care. And for example, in we had so the opportunity in Belgium to understand that uh, we could compare the the newborns uh, screened in Brussels region, for example, with those who were not screened because we have a national registry with the with the patient. And uh, we could un understand that uh, even if, if everything is uh, evolving, there are um, the new uh, the new vaccination and extended va vaccination process. Uh, but of course, you don't give antibiotic therapy to all the all the, the children. Uh, it is it, it is really a benefit to to have the neonatal screening. So still. So I can read this comment. Um, I believe there is universal screening for cystic fibrosis when it's less prevalent than sickle cell disease in France. So the lack of universal screening here could be perceived as unethical and discriminatory by patients and patients mm -hmm. at group. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. <laughs> So I, I think we can we can also say that uh, it's 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 good to know that uh, patients with cystic fibrosis are are screened and then have a diagnosis. Um, I think it's important. So I, I I would say okay, it's it's very good for the cystic fibrosis just to to. Um, if we speak about sickle cell disease, we would like to have something also uh, universal. I don't think it's necessary to, to compare. I can see one hand right. Um, Miriam, if you want, you can unmute yourself and take the floor. Hello. Uh, yes, uh, it was really nice and very informative. Thank you very much. I think it's probably the presentation that I've seen that is very, very clear. Mm, for thank you. If, 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 <laughs> even those, uh, because usually they are very, how can I say, technical. Mm. So it's not easy for someone who is not a professional to follow it. This one is really accessible. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Um, thank you. I, was, I try. I try. I try that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask something. So I've noticed in the chat I have provided some very small piece of information about Portugal because you mentioned uh, if we would like to share that, it's still in a in a in a pilot stage because they are gathering information to see if it will indeed be included in the national program of the neonatal uh, screening, as, as far as I understand. I'm probably not the best person to talk about that, but I can gather more information on that. I noticed that Antonio from Spain was wants more information. So Mariangela has my has my email. So if Mariangela, if you could share it, then fine. I will find the information that Antonio wants or whoever else wants. And more, um, how can I say? Uh, that is not misleading, which is the correct information because sometimes it's difficult to find that. I wanted to ask because I noticed that in, there was a presentation in Portugal last year when they moved from the two highest prevalence uh, districts to nationwide. There was a presentation that they made. And one of the questions that was raised was about what happens with the information about the traits only. Mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. For example, the, I was checking here, the information that they gave is that from those two districts, so one is the capital Lisbon district, and the other one is Setubo, which is south of it, and which corresponds, it's much similar to the Mediterranean basin, so it's a basin, it's a, a big area with rice fields where there was a big migration um, in the beginning of the 20th century or something, and so uh, it was the same th thing with malaria. So there is a big concentration there, right? And so they said that in the nine months pilots that they ran in these two districts, 
they tested about 23,000 babies with 25 babies having sickle cell disease. Mm. So probably there were more just with the traits, but there were 25. What I'm asking is if you have any information on what happens or how is the information treated, meaning if you have, let's say, I don't know, 500 with a trait and only 25 with a disease, is it only the 25 with a disease that are relevant or what happens? Thank you. So, so um, if, you, if, you, if you go to, to the, the purpose of the neonatal screening, it's only to give the, the results of the disease. It's, it's the same for the metabolic disorders. And uh, you only give this, and this is really the purpose and they focus on that. But of course, we, we understood that the tray, maybe for, for sickle cell disease, something different, because when you have the, the tray, um, since we have many, many, um, newborns with the with the tray, we can. For me, for me, uh, I, I I really I, I was really happy to inform about it. Of course, you can say, okay, the parents are afraid; they don't understand. Uh, but I'm not sure of that. If you take your time and you give uh, a, a correct information, I think it's in interesting. And it's also too interesting, as I told you before, for the parents. So they know that they are carriers and maybe there is a risk for the, the, the next child. So that's important. And that's important for the, for the child too, when it will be old, but maybe we'll have a, a treatment since then. I don't know. But also, it was really, really powerful to, um, to inform all the, the nurses, the medical doctors about the disease. And, and to me, it was really, really very interesting yeah, to inform about that because the expert center are not always um, known. And so, to me, it was it was really uh, something uh, important. But the choice is is related to to the, the the way the the authorities would like to spend the the money. Because of course, if you have to give such a huge amount of uh, of tray. Uh, yeah, it's it's it it needs it needs something very well organized and uh, more power put put in that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Until now, there are no more other comments nor question in the chat. But please uh, do not hesitate to unmute yourself and take the floor, as said. I've got a question. Doc, somebody was saying that in France, um, no, even you started saying sometimes it's because of financial constraint or something that they don't particularly do the screening. And you mentioned about France and somebody mentioned about the fact that they are screening more uh, the other disease and because there are more sickle cell patients in France than that disease, and you said they can't compare. Why can't we compare? Because this disease has, well, compare the people, more people of black nature have the disease than white. So the policymakers, everybody in power, they are not thinking about sickle cell, but they will think about something that can affect their family members. So if you're talking about it, let's be clear and call it how it is. Why are they not screening more black people or sickle cell patients in France? I know you are not, we are not talking politics here, but at the same time, you can't say that is good. So we can't compare. It's good that they are screening, yes, but why are they doing more for 
Is it, uh, sorry, I can't remember the disease that the person mentioned. Cystic not, fibrosis, cystic that's fibrosis. That's it, that's yeah, it, yeah. yeah. But you know, um, what, what did, what did uh, of course it's not a, a political floor, huh? uh, but, but what we know that in France, in the downtown, uh, where there's a huge amount of, uh, of, uh, of patients at risk, they do a universal screen. So, yeah, and they try, they try to, uh, all over the year, they, they, they really try to, uh, um, to see if too many uh, cases are missed. And um, yeah, that, that, that's a way to, 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 to do it. I, I can't uh, criticize, as I, as I said before, I think that uh, it's it's better than in any countries where there is no screening at all. Yes, it is. But if the facilities are there, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. we must encourage. I know mm -hmm. you said something good, like the patient. We should advocate. We should push yeah, for yeah. change. That's what I. Yes. That's what I. I really think that uh, you have to advocate and and. Um, uh, we have, uh, I, I, I had cases with, um, uh, I, I remember a family and, and uh, the, the husband was from Belgium, Belgian ancestry, but the abnormal hemoglobin was something different. And the, the, the wife, it was, oh, a long time ago, it was the fifth ancestry, as I remember, with hemoglobin. So the, the, the couple was really, they, they, they were white, as you said before, huh? they, were, they were white. And, and even if they were not screened, they were not screened, that, that's it. So I think that you have to, to, we have to work together as medical doctors, and in parallel, and, and both in the same way to push the authorities to understand what's important, what we can do, and how we can, how we can proceed. And this is why I, I, I ask you, how do you see the way that the, um, the patient association can help to push uh, the neonatal screening in every country where uh, at least it's reasonable to uh, propose it for uh, all the, the newborns. Thank you. Thank you to you too. Thank you to both of you. <laughs> uh, so I think we have the time for the last question or comment, if any. Okay. Then I think we can close the, the session. Before that, um, I would like to inform you that the next webinar that is on gestational risk uh, was foreseen for the 6th of June, but it has been po postponed to the next week. So it will be held the 13th of June. Um, with Dr. Laura Joseph, so gestational risk. And so, well, thank all of you for uh, being here. Most of all, thank to Professor Gurbis for having shared with us in a very clear way her expertise and the, her time. And thank to all of you for the debate and the share of idea and input. Thank you very much. So I hope to see you on the next session in one thank month. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> bye, bye. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, bye.